Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 14th January 2024. So let's get started and today is Sunday. So don't skip this Sunday's newspaper because you can cover many articles and current affairs regarding current uh, regarding this environment and ecology and as well as from science and technology point of view. So please don't skip this Sunday's newspaper. And here we are going to pick out the articles from the today's newspaper and we are going to uh, go through this overall today's newspaper PDF and we are going to pick out the articles which are relevant from our examination point of view and later on we are going to see different dimensions. Clear? So without wasting any time, let's get started. So this is front page of Hindu today and I am taking Delhi edition. Okay. So there is nothing much important article in our today's front page. So leave this. Okay. No, not necessary like you have to read each and every article. So articles children from our examination point of view, we are going to see. And in Sunday's newspaper, there will be hardly 6 to 7 articles. That's it. Nothing more than that. And the city page also I found nothing much relevant. So you can leave the city page. And you can move on. So in the states page, you can see one article which is important. That is receive details from India on social security pact more work required on subject says USDR. Okay, so this article is talking about social security. So we are going to see like some important dimensions what you have to see from this article point of view. <coughs> so uh, if you want you can make a note of these dimensions also. So it is talking about social security. Okay, it is talking about social security. So here what are the dimensions that you have to see like what is the meaning okay so what is the meaning of social security <clears throat> for example if you are working in an organized sector organized sector so this social security can be studied from even gs paper 3 because in our economy if you are talking about employment, so employment is created in two sectors, organized sector and unorganized sector. So if you are getting job in organized sector, you will be having the social security benefits. So I will give you some examples like what all will come under this social security. Like you will be getting insurance like health insurance and you will be getting paid leaves and you will be getting maternity leaves and nowadays we are talking about even paternity leaves okay so these are some examples you will be having and so these are some important things that you have to remember regarding the social security so now we are talking about social security of people who are living in other countries. Yes, you know about this topic of migration, right? So migration you will be studying in geography, which comes in the GS paper 1. So in this migration, we have different types of migrations like inter-migrations and intra-migrations. So intra means within country. Intra means within country. If you are moving from one place to another place within country but this inter means you are moving from one country to another country okay for example there are many people who migrated to so and so country for example let us take us so what about the social security benefits for this people so here we are coming up with agreement so why it is in us because we are coming up with agreement with us regarding the social security benefits so here what are the exact dimensions you have to see so you have to see like what is the significance so what is the significance of this agreement so how it will be helpful so this is the one important point and the second one is you have to see 
what is the need of universal basic income so what is the importance of this universal basic income so actually it is highly in use so you can get a means based question from here and one more important thing is importance importance of social security benefits okay so all these are the important dimensions that you have to think from this article point of view so i hope it is clear right yeah now let us move on to next topic so actually i am out of station because of the sankranti vacation and i don't want to miss this hindu analysis so i am adjusting and i am adjusting with my laptop and i am uh, recording this video so for today please uh, do adjust with my analysis and as soon as possible i will be reaching hyderabad then i will be starting uh, with this digital board only so i will be going to the recording room so there will be no issue so once i reach this hyderabad okay so now uh, let us see next topic next topic is also very important that is near complete dam of ken betwa project it to get environmental not so actually there is one issue which is going on with this ken betwa project okay so this article is talking about ken betwa ken betwa project so this topic is important from interlinking of levels okay it is important from interlinking of rivers so here what you have to see here you have to see some examples of interlinking of rivers from both peninsula rivers okay peninsula rivers and next one is himalayan rivers so from himalayan rivers and peninsula rivers you have to see examples of this interlinking of rivers and you have to see what is the issue so whenever we are interlinking two rivers okay so whenever we are interlinking two rivers what are the issues that we are going to see so you have to see issues from economy point of view from environmental point of view okay and you can see what are the challenges point of view etc and why we are going for this interlinking of rivers so we have some advantage in our mind right so with that advantage and significance we are moving towards this interlinking of rivers you have to see what are the advantages or what is the significance so what is the significance or what are the advantages of this interlinking of rivers and why it is in news now because so what are the project we are going for the scan betwa project which has not to get environmental clearance so it does not get this environmental clearance but this project is going to complete okay so there is forwardness is seen in this project but this this project did not get this environmental clearance so from this point of view, you have to see what is this project about so what are the advantages of this project okay so what are the issues which are going on and even from environment and ecology point of view you have to see this that is environment impact assessment so this will be very important topic from your means so you have to see from geography point of view like which are these rivers ken and betwa and where they are flowing in which state and you have to see this project and you have to see like some examples of interlinking of rivers and issues of this interlinking of rivers it will be affecting biodiversity the most so i will give you one example like how it is affecting the biodiversity so for example here so this river which is moving in this way and there is another river which is moving so we are talking about interlinking of these two rivers through canals so whenever we are interlinking these rivers so for example this river which is having the high flow of water so the water is diverted here that means the flow of water is affected here and there is less amount of water now in this river so because of this it will be affecting the biodiversity which are present in this region and whenever the water which are moving in this direction so the animals which are living in this area so they have the tendency to come into this area 
So in this area now they have to go for adaptations to adapt in the new environment. So if they are adapting then they will survive, if they are not adapting means they will lose their life. So in this way we have some more impact. I hope it is clear right. And now let us move on to next topic. Okay, you can move on to this news page here. You can see one article that is Jai Shankar to visit Iran as US UK target Houthis. So already we discussed this topic in our studies class. Yes or no? Yes, right? So this article is talking about US and UK relations with Iran. And if you see the background here, US and Iran, they are anti. So I can say they are enemy countries. And the deal between this US, Iran and some other countries is Iran's nuclear deal or joint comprehensive plan of action which came in year 2015. But here US came out of this JCPOA. Okay. And if you see Iran which is very much important to India. So why Iran is important to India? So it is country which is helpful for India to connect West Asia. And to connect with Afghanistan also if Iran plays very important role. Because to access Afghanistan, Pakistan will be not allowing to use its land or even to use its airspace. It is not allowing to use its land or airspace. So here we are going and connecting with the Chabahar port. So which is the name of that port, Chabahar port in Iran and through this by using of railways and roadways we are connecting this Afghanistan to Kabul. Okay, so especially in this Kabul we are connecting and even here we came up with lots of lots of policies okay, or the programs to connect West Asian countries and to connect Europe. So through this here Iran plays a very important role and not only this we are getting oil. So earlier we used to get oil from this Iran but because of US okay US tension that is Katsa. So US came up with an act called as Katsa that is called as countering American adversaries through sanction act. So because of the fear of this Katsa India India's imports of this oil from Iran which became zero. But even though Iran is very very important for India to connect strategically. Okay, so now what is the issue here is, so Iran is supporting Houthis. So Iran is supporting Houthis. So Houthis are the militant groups they are operating from Yemen. Okay, so Houthis they are supporting this Palestinians. Okay, for example Hamas. So Houthis are supporting this Hamas. On another side US is supporting Israel. So there is an issue between Israel and Palestine and actually here Iran with the help of Houthis it is now attacking ships or merchant vessels, vessels they are going through this Red Sea region. So because of this now US and UK they united and they want to attack this Houthis. They want to attack this Houthis. Okay so now India is entering into this picture and India is going to visit Iran okay so this is the issue and these are some important things that you have to remember so here what are the things that you have to know you have to see map of Iran and you have to see like countries which are sharing boundary with Iran so this is the first important thing and next one is you have to see who is this Houthis and who are these Hamas and third one is Israel Palestine issue you can see and fourth one is you have to see what is this Iran's nuclear deal of 2015. And fifth one is you have to see what is this Katsa. And sixth, okay, last but not least, you have to see even what is the relevance or significance. What is the significance of Iran to India? So why is Iran important to India? So all these are very important and I said about GS paper on geography, international relations okay, and as well as economy point. So in this way you can interconnect the topics. 
I hope it is clear, right? So now let us move on to next topic. Next topic here is HPV vaccination. Center had to take a call on beginning HPV vaccination campaign for girls. So this article is also at most important and there is a high chance of getting questions from this topic. Okay, so let us see the dimensions. So this topic is called as HPV vaccine. So you have to see what is the full form of this HPV that is human, human papilloma virus. So why this vaccine is important because it is causing cancer especially in women okay especially in women so which type of cancer cervical cancer so to understand where the cervix is present exactly you have to know the reproductive system of women okay so this is uterus So we will be having two fallopian tubules, one on right and one on left and we have ovaries like this. So ovaries are also called as egg bags. So eggs will be there. So this is fallopian tube and this part is cervix. So what happens? So there will be abnormal growth of cells will happen in the cervix. So it is because of this viral infection that is HPV virus. So HPV human papilloma virus is responsible for the cervical cancer and recently we developed this HPV vaccine to protect women from this cervical cancer. And one important thing that you have to think about this human papilloma virus is so you have to use this vaccine in adolescent age. In adolescent age that means before starting of sexual activity. So before starting of sexual activity itself, so girls, they have to take this vaccine. Okay, then only it will be effective. That means normally between 9 to 14 years, we can take this vaccine. So after the sexual, after one sexual activity is started, then there is no use of this vaccine. Okay, and sometimes uh, even before you are getting pregnant also, some uh, some prescribers or some doctors they will be recommending to take this human papilloma vaccines. So actually the issue here is so our government of India is running universal it is running universal vaccination program. Okay so our government is running this universal vaccination program. For example you might be knowing about this Anganwadis or PHS primary health care centers so if you are taking your children to the centers they will be getting vaccinated so this vaccinations will be given free of cost by the government so actually there is a question like whether we have to include this HPV vaccine in this universal vaccination program or not so that is the thing and at now central government which had not taken any decision so this is the issue and what are the dimensions that you have to think so first one is you have to see what is the cervical cancer. So what is the cervical cancer? Next one is human papilloma vaccine you have to see. And third one is universal vaccination program. So these three are very very important dimensions that you have to think. Okay, I hope it is clear right. Okay, now let us move on to next topic. It is about India's oldest living city found in Vadnagar, which is located in Gujarat. So this article which is talking about a myth, okay, or we can say dark age. So why we are calling it as dark age? So let us see the dimensions. So it is talking about dark age. So if you see the flourishing of Indus Valley civilization, so it has flourished along this river Indus and you have to see the dimension okay. So eastmost, westmost, northmost and southmost okay. So this is the dimensions that you have to see and actually here during this period of Indus Valley civilization so we had 
first stage of urbanization okay so we had first stage of urbanization so why i'm calling it as first stage of urbanization because so we had lots and lots of developments like we have um, pottery we have different seals different statues and different terracotta figurines and as well as good drainage system two story buildings upper citadel lower citadel and public gatherings fire altars okay so we have different ornaments etc so that stage we had a first stage of urbanization but because of this climate change and there are four to five theories which says about what are the reasons for this decline of this ivc and after ivc we enter into vedic period so in this vedic period we have early vedic and later vedic and later on mauryans came into picture and later on post mauryans so during this period after ivc we are calling it as a dark age but now the recent excavations in this vad nagar of gujarat says that it have the architecture which is belonging to the post harappan civilization okay so that is the thing which mainly said and here you have to know some dimensions like ivc first one and you have to know important sites of ivc and you have to so uh, see like what are the archaeological evidences that we found there and the next one you have to see important features of this ivc and one more thing here is why we are calling this post harappan civilization as a dark age so in this way you can get a question from your prelims and as well as mains point of view so i hope uh, whatever the thing that i am writing on the screen you can you can uh, you can see right it is is it visible or not so yesterday i got comments like so whatever the you wrote on the screen which is not visible so today i am writing somewhat big okay so i hope it is clear now right and now let us move on to next topic so you can go to directly the science page okay you can go to directly the science page so first article is changing environment causes demise of largest primates so this article is talking about primates so you have to see the classification where exactly this primate fits okay so here if you are from anthropology background yes you will be studying about phylogenetic status right so in that way you have to see the phylogenetic status of primates so this article says that because of changing of environment that is because of climate change so because of this climate change so it is having impact on animals or we can say impact on biodiversity so it is having impact on biodiversity so because of this uh, climate change it is linked to even extinction of some species so that is the thing which mainly said here can one more interesting thing i found here is cells from fetus and mother communicate during labor so labor is a very very difficult okay so it will be like horrible okay it will be like horrible because as a mother i am saying like how this labor will be and i found this is very much interesting so i don't know this facts okay that is what are the cells that are generating from the fetus that cells will helps to communicate with the mother's system mother's hormone system and that will be helpful in the labor okay so many of them they will be feeling that um, labor will be easy if the fetus is died in the body okay so if there is any premature death or if anything which happens wrong during pregnancy sometimes fetus will be dying inside the womb itself so that time to bring the fetus out it will be very very difficult okay very very difficult because so there will be no movements in the baby so that baby will not push him uh, herself or himself to come outside of the womb but whenever the fetus is alive so baby will be having movements and baby will be also trying to come outside okay so that is the tragedy that i faced so i lost my first baby so that time i went to even uh, trauma okay so that yes this whenever we are having a live fetus it is very easy to have the labor and that is the thing which mainly said by this study as well okay so by applying single cell technologies from the data from pregnant women researchers have constructed that uh, whenever babies alive so what are the cells they are generated that will be helpful to communicate with the mother 
and that will be helpful for easy labor and next topic here is extinction risk for thousands of atlantic forest trees so what happened there is a risk of extinction because of climate change okay so that's all so these are very important articles that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper now let us see the notes and if you want to get the notes you can join the telegram channel link is given in the description box and one more thing here is we are going to come up with this new recorded classes plus live classes for your foundation course for 2025 and 2026 and that will be given just for 25000 so we are covering a to z from your prelims to mains okay try to join that foundational course it will be absolutely useful for you okay so it will be very very useful for you students because we are covering from basic to advanced level and even if you have any single doubt we are going to clear your doubts so you will be having live classes and personal mentorship classes will be there on zoom okay, if you have any problem you can share your problems with the mentors so that they will be providing you the possible solution and this will be helpful to achieve your goal within a short period of time okay so you are investing just 25,000 rupees okay that's it for your foundational course you are covering each and everything and the faculty or experienced faculty and who wrote mains only okay so now let us see the notes path so this is our notes so the first topic it is about Kane betwa project so we are going to see very important facts that you have to refer from this article point of view a major dam project of Madhya Pradesh government. So, where it is located in state of Madhya Pradesh. So, you have to see the examples of this type of projects and from which state they belong to. Okay, so this Kin Betwa project is belongs to this Madhya Pradesh government. So, it is a part of centers Mark Kin Betwa River interlinking project and it was found like violation of environment clearance laws. So, if you see in 2019 itself, Madhya Pradesh government began constructing lower ore dam. So, this ore dam which is part of second phase of center's ambitious Ken Betwa river linking project. So, in 2022 states had not taken a formal clearance from environment ministry. So, because of this now we are saying that it is a violation against project. So, this project proponent there, there was like NWD that is National Water Development Agency and also Jal Shakti Ministry okay which is involved here. So we are talking about this Kin Betwa interlinking project. So it is the first project under National Perspective Plan. So this plan it is regarding interlinking of rivers and what is the important aim of this project to transfer surplus water from one river basin to another river basin. So that we can address the issue of scarcity and as well as it will also enhance irrigation in these regions. So this skin betwa interlinking of river project which involves transferring of water from Ken Betwa River in Madhya Pradesh. So in this Ken Betwa Ken River, so we are transferring the river, uh, water to this Betwa River in Uttar Pradesh. So actually these two rivers, Kin and Betwa, so they are tributaries of river Yamuna. So Yamuna in turn tributary of river Ganga. Kin Betwa, they are the tributaries of Yamuna. So, this is Yamuna River, and this Yamuna is tributary of River Ganga. Okay, so this is Ken and this is Betwa. So, we are talking about interlinking now here. So, what is the significance of this project? So, it will accelerate water conservation by construction of multi purpose dam, and even it will be helpful for generation of hydropower. And even it will be helpful for supplying of drinking water to about 62 lakh people. And this canal which flows through Chhatrapur and Thikamgarh and Jansi district. And there is also a production light like it will irrigate around 6.3 lakh hectares of land every year. So it is expected to irrigate 6.3 lakh hectares of land every year. And what are this Kane and Betwa rivers? So, Kin and Betwa rivers they originate in map in MP. Okay, so they are tributaries of river Yamuna. And Kin meets Yamuna near Banda district of Uttar Pradesh. 
and Betwa joins this Emuna River in this Hamirpur district of UP. So if you're talking about different dams on this Betwa River, we have Rajgat, Paricha, Matatila dams over this Betwa River and actually this Kin River which passes through Panna Taika Reserve. So it is one cause of concern. And now let us have a look over the map. So this is Madhya Pradesh and here we have this Betwa. Okay. It is moving like this and here uh, we have this Ken and we are talking about this interlinking like this. So here we have Chatpur district, Tikamgar. So in these areas, yes, it is flowing or it is moving. And next topic is about social security agreement or pact between India and US. So US trade representative said that yes, information from India recently they got regarding the proposal of social security agreement. So US uh, trade representative said that we have to do much work to confirm this. So if you're talking about the social security totalization agreement, it will be the one of the key asks from the Indian side in the meeting. So we had this trade policy forum meeting. So in this meeting here, is a, this is the one important thing which mainly asked. And here as it will significantly contribute towards enhancing the services, trade between the countries and help Indian IT professionals so who temporarily work in the US. So India has submitted all the relevant data on its social security schemes. So which was sought by US to start negotiations on the agreement. And even this agreement will benefit a number of Indians, particularly from this IT sector. So they are working in America and who are paying social security and who are unable to get any benefit out of it. So actually in India, they already paid, okay, social security benefits, but you are not getting that. So for them, this social security agreement is very, very useful. So actually the social security agreement, it is nothing but it can be done between the two countries that provides the protection of the interest of cross border workers. So for the interest of this cross border workers, it will be very useful. And basically this social security agreement which avoids double coverage and treats the workers of both the host country and as well as home country equally, especially in terms of social security. So we're talking about benefits, there are three important benefits of this social security agreement. So first one here is detachment. So it is nothing but elimination of dual contribution. There is no need of contributing in the two countries. So employees who are moving for employment to any country with which there is SSA, they are exempt from making social security contribution in the host country. That too for a specified period. Okay, so that is the one important advantage. So this benefit they can get only when they are submitting this certificate of coverage. Okay, so if they are having the certificate of coverage and they can be exempted. And next one is exportability. So this exportability of pension clause under which an employee can close and can choose to receive social security benefits in their host country and their home or their home country without any reduction in the benefits. And next one is totalization. So under totalization of benefits clause, so the period of service rendered by an employee in a foreign country is counted for deciding the eligibility for benefits. And next topic it is about HPV vaccine. So it is very important. So our union health ministry said that it was yet to take decision to start this vaccination against human papilloma virus which is causing cervical cancer in women. <clears throat> so if you see the details it says that National Technical Advisory Group for Immunization has recommended vaccination for adolescent girls who are between the age of 9 to 14 years of age. So the health ministry earlier said that in June 2022, after evaluating the fresh evidence of the cervical cancer burden, so we came up with this HPV vaccine. So which is including the trail data and as well as Sikkim's experience with the vaccine. So here it also recommended that vaccine inclusion in the government's universal immunization program. So if we're talking about this universal immunization program, so this program will provide free immunization against dual vaccine preventable diseases. So only for the vaccine preventable diseases, yes, we have this universal immunization program. 
So nationally against, it is against nine diseases like we have diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, polio, measles, rubella, okay, tuberculosis, hepatitis B, meningitis, pneumonia, which are caused by this hemophilus influenza type B. And if you see here, we are also having some nationally against three diseases that is rotavirus, pneumococcal pneumonia and Japanese encephalitis. So for these also we have vaccines. And two major milestones of universal immunization program is nothing but eradication of polio in 2014 and elimination of maternal and uh, neonatal tetanus in, 2020, in 2015. That means actually if you are becoming a pregnant, you will be having this TT injections like so they are against tetanus. So if you are taking this TT injections during pregnancy, it will be helpful to uh, helpful you to stay away from this tetanus either for mother and as well as for the neonatal or the new needs and next here you have to know about some facts regarding cervical cancer cervical cancer it is a prevent, prevalent sexually transmitted infection so especially in the cervix of women reproductive system so unusual or abnormal growth of cells will happen that will cause this cancer so it is a type of cancer that occurs in the cells of cervix it is nothing but the lower part of uterus that connects to vagina so it is mostly caused by long term infection with particular forms of HPV and it is the second most prevalent cancer from form. The second leading cause of cancer death in women of reproductive age, it is between 15 to 44 years. And if you see from perspective of India, so according to World Health Organization, International Agency for Research on Cancer, so India accounts for roughly one fifth of global burden with 1.23 lakh cases and around 67,000 fatalities every year. And if you see the next topic, it is about oldest living city found in Vadnagar. So you can get a Vadnagar which is located in mid state. It is located in Gujarat. So this article is important from your history point of view. So recently a joint study which done by five prominent institutions and these institutions, they found some significant evidence of cultural continuity in Vadnagar, okay, which is located in present day Gujarat. Okay, so even after collapse of Harappan civilization, so it is making the likely there is a dark age. So it was a myth. So from deep archaeological excavations in this Vadnagar, so consortium that is a group of scientists from Indian Institute of Technology, Karagpur, Archaeological Survey of India. Physical Research Laboratory of Jawaharlal Nehru University and Deccan College, they found yes, there are evidence of human settlements and they are belonging to this 800 BCE. So, this age is contemporary, that is the same period during this later Vedic and pre Buddhist or Mahachanpadas or Adhigarkic republics. So, this study which also indicates that there is a rise and fall of different kingdoms. Yes, there is rise and fall of different kingdoms during 3000 year period and there was also recurrent invasions of India by Central Asian warriors. And even we are also having several changes in our climate like rainfall, droughts and this Vadnaga which was a multicultural and as well as multi-religious settlement. So we have Buddhist settlements, Hindu settlements, Jain settlements and Islamic settlements here. And in this excavation they got several deep trenches. And these trenches which showed about the presence of several, several uh, cultural stages like Mauryan period, Indo-Greeks, Indo-Scythian, Shaka, Kshatrapas and even descendants of Archimede empires and Solankis, Sultan, Mughals and Gaekwad British colonial rule and city endures even today. So it is one of the oldest Buddhist monasteries which has been discovered during excavations as well. And also they found some characteristic archaeological artifacts like potteries, copper, gold, silver and iron objects that are intrinsically designed bangles. So all these things they had been excavated. So we also found that coin mouths of the Greek king Apollodatus during the Indo-Greek rule at Vadnagar. So the period between the collapse of Indus Valley civilization and the emergence of Iron Age and cities like Gandhar, Koshal, Avanti, they are often depicted as a dark age by archaeologists. But this evidence which showed that yes, there is a fortification which happened during this period as well. So now it is a myth. 
So this is the thing which mainly said. <coughs> and next topic it is about Atlantic forest area. So there is a risk of extinction. So if you see context, it says that a comprehensive analysis of tree species conservation statuses okay across this Atlantic forest trees they reveal high extinction risk. So if you see details it says that according to the study roughly two thirds of 4950 tree species they are living in this biodiversity hotspot and they are having a threats with extinction. So even around 82 percentage of endemic species they have quite limited geographic ranges. So the researchers they suggest that the conservation status of tropical forest that may be worse than previously believed. So here this article says that yes there is an impact of climate change on the biodiversity either it may be flora either it may be fauna. So these are the important articles from our today's Hindu newspaper and this is our analysis. And one more thing here is prelims is very much near don't waste time and do revise the topics. Okay, so first complete major topics like uh, polity, environment and ecology, uh, geography, economy and later on history. Okay, and thoroughly read current affairs. Current affairs plays a very important role. Uh, so you have to have a thorough idea of current affairs, especially from international relations point of view. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this class. If you really like this class, hit the like button. It will not take more than two seconds of time and try to share this video to your friends also. Okay, so that's all for today and please do subscribe to Rathod's IS Academy. Thank you so much for watching.